here we go. Okay, so uh, I'm going to make some comments here on smartphone-based data collection in, in, in brief. Um, and um, and then we'll, we'll let you uh, hear directly from RV or for those uh, preferring, uh, um, yeah, I think maybe, maybe we'll focus on, on Marvi's presentation for, for all of us. And I'll go into some, some detail on the particle filtering uh, tomorrow if people are interested. So um, uh, for uh, well over a decade now, since the H1N1 pandemic, our group has been using um, mobile data collection for, um, for health data collection. This has spanned areas from mental health to issues having to do with chronic disease, communicable disease, um, zoonoses, et cetera. Um, uh, you know, the, um, the systems uh, that we've designed have been designed to, to be low barrier, um, minimize or, or eliminate programming, um, have, have quick deployment capability, flexible and, and, and nimble. And Marvi will be talking more about this Ethica data system. I'm not gonna talk about it, but I, I will just note that systems of this sort uh, enable um, collection of data, not only on, on, on surveys and, and you know, that will elicit answers to questions from people, say on, on Lyme disease or, or to reporting ticks and, and reporting new rashes or, or, um, or care seeking or what have you. But it can also include a wide variety of, um, of sensors. Um, and uh, the sensor data may seem puzzling, but it can be really valuable for informing models and informing understanding with machine learning. Um, um, this from work um, with Harvard collaborators on, um, I think I'd mentioned before, on exposure to tobacco related uh, messaging, uh, published work. Um, I hear contact patterns, um, you know, during and outside of, of working hours uh, during the H1N1 pandemic. Um, and, um, uh, and, and many of these types of, of data can be further supplemented by proactive reporting by by uh, by individuals, um, and and uh, may include recording of of of, of audio as well. Um, uh, smartphone studies, um, uh, you know, have do have challenges of uh, recruiting participants, keeping them engaged, filtering out irrelevant sensor data if you're collecting that, um, uh, processing that sensor data, make it, making it sensible. Some of them gain great benefit by presenting that data back to those who offer it. Um, uh, this from a, a study here in Saskatchewan um, that I helped uh, catalyze involving um, physical activity patterns and providing that data back to residents who contributed um, uh, in sort of community voice as part of community voices. Um, uh, there's opportunities when you collect data with this um, smartphones are, are definitely um, contribute or a component of the um, health big data uh, uh, firmament um, in, in a pronounced way. They're characterized by high volume, high velocity. Um, take sensors like uh, step counts um, and you'll be getting you know, many, many readings an hour. Take sensors like accelerometers you may be getting many readings a second. Um, take GPS, you may be getting readings every few minutes. Um, take uh, questionnaires, you may get, you know, um, you know once a day or, or once, every, uh, once every few days or a few times a day, depending on your, your frequency. But um, you can also cross link this data, things like GIS data, um, graphical, uh, geographic information systems or, or weather databases. And um, in some studies, we've looked at browsing behavior. Um, um, some of our work on youth mental health looks at, for example, social media use and, and uh, screen time and relates that to um, uh, feelings of you know, emotions um, reported by participants um, over time and relates it to what they're doing on those smartphones. Um, uh, okay, I think I'm going to, and with with that sort of header, um, 
I think I'm going to um, see if we can turn this over to Marvi um, so she can um, talk with us some about the um, the Ethica system. So Marvi, is that something uh, you feel uh, empowered to do right now? <laughs> 